Just recently, my wife's uncle Bo was in town and his background is trimming trees, getting up in trees and cutting limbs off and things like that. And so while he was in town, she decided to ask him to come over and to help clear some of these uh, overhanging limbs and dead limbs off this tree. Uh, the only, de only deal is that Uncle Bo was about 137 years old. And then she, to make matters worse, she compounded by asking her Uncle Michael to also come and help. Now, Uncle Michael has some, some heart issues. I, I don't know, maybe he's had like, like seven, eight, nine heart bypasses, something like that. Anyway, we're talking about a combined 200 years of experience, right? These guys are born in, in the 1800s, something like that. These are ancestors. And so the problem that, that I had was I really didn't feel like doing any work that day, but because they were coming over, I didn't want to have you know, them getting hurt and that happening kind of on my watch. And so I put on my clothes and I want to go out there and just, just make sure they didn't get hurt. I figured that I would have to be the one that would have to get up in the tree or, or something like that. And so I put on my clothes and go outside and what do I see? Uncle Michael's back there in the back on the side of the house in the, in the bushes, pulling twigs and, and pulling branches and vines and stuff down. And I'm looking for Uncle Bo and where is he? He's up in the tree. I mean, these two senior citizens, they're working. So it went from me making sure that they don't get hurt to me sitting down watching them staying out of the way so I don't get hurt. And so what's a guy like me to do, right? Well, I did what any man in my position would do. I sat down, I watched them, and then once they left, I took all the credit. Sometimes we forget how valuable older people are. Now, I can say that because I'm getting up there myself. You probably noticed that I don't have my hair and that's not because I shaved it off. It's because my hair decided to leave on its own. I know what it's like to get older. And there was a time where I didn't, I didn't look at getting older too fondly, right? I, I, I admired my youth and there's an old saying, you've heard it before that says youth is wasted on the young. Why is that? Well, because when you're young, you've got all this vim and vigor, all this vitality, but the one thing you're lacking in many cases, no, not in many cases, in every case is a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience. You can be smart, but being smart doesn't bypass wisdom, how you handle the things that you know. Even someone who maybe has been to school and, and they're in their, their, their late teens, or early 20s, even early 30s, I would take the person that's got some more experience in life over that person. And, you know, there's these different stages in life. When kids are growing up, they, they learn some things and, and they want to share it. They feel like they're getting smarter. And then when they get in their 20s, oh my God, you, it's hard to tell them anything, right? Because they feel like that they've got answers to everything. But then they get to their 30s. You think 20s were bad. In your 30s, you feel like I'm, I'm an adult, right? More so than I was in my 20s. I've got a little bit of experience. I, maybe I'm married, got a couple of kids. And so now I feel like I'm on par. I'm equal with the, those that are older. But those of us who have been around the block a couple of times, uh, maybe you're like me. You've got adult children. My oldest is 30. I've got grand. I got, I got three grandkids. And so if you're like me, you get into your 40s and your 50s and you start looking back and and rather than being the 30 something who thinks that they know a whole lot in your 40s and 50s, you begin to realize that all the stuff that you thought that you knew, you don't really know that much anymore. Now, uh, when you get in your 30s, after a while, you start seeing some things, especially in your 40s, you start speaking just the way that your parents spoke to you and you're wondering, man, where did that come from? Well, that's what you call wisdom. That's what the Bible calls wisdom. In Job, the Bible puts it like this. He says that wisdom belongs to the aged. Proverbs 16 puts it like this. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Now, it didn't necessarily mean that you have to have gray hair. And of course, if I had some hair up there, you'd see that a lot of it is gray. Some of that is just because you're old. And that doesn't necessarily mean that because you're old that you have some wisdom. But the one thing you won't see is a lot of wisdom in someone who's young. Doesn't mean that young people can't be wise and they would maybe be wise for their age, but the Bible makes it clear that we ought to respect the age of people as they get older. You take someone who's 35 and ask them, are you wiser now than you were 
three, four, five years ago, and then go back five years from then, were you wiser five years prior, and then five years prior to that? And they would all say, sure. Well, just like you got wiser as you aged, so too did the 40-year-old, the 50-year-old, the 60-year-old. Why am I saying this? The Bible says, listen to advice and instruction that you can gain some wisdom in, 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 your, in your later years. And so fools despise instruction. And God is clear that younger folks ought to look to older people to gain some wisdom. Maybe the older person may not know as much as it pertains to uh, technology or how do you do certain things. I mean, I don't. Uh, I just found out what LOL meant. I thought that it always meant someone is literally laughing out loud. I just found out what a, what, what a DM is uh, because those haven't been the most important things to me. And so the younger folk will look at me and think that, my God, where's this guy been? <laughs> so, but don't let someone, because you're young, despise you because of your youth, as Paul is telling Timothy. You can get so high-minded and so big-headed and so reliant on what you've learned in school uh, because you've picked up a few degrees here or there, you've learned a trade that now you've got a full grasp on the world. Well, no, that's not how it works. When Uncle Michael and Uncle Bo were finished, they were showing me how to, the proper way of using a chainsaw. I thought to just put the thing down and just start cutting. And they told me no, and they showed me the right way to do it. And because the, even though they were older, uh, I would have been the foolish person trying to say, yeah, I know I can figure this out. Well, I know enough to know what I don't know. Ultimately, all wisdom comes from above. But absent you having God speak to you, God has blessed us on this planet to have people who are older. You may have a grandmother or a great grandmother or a mother or a father or someone that's a little bit older than you that you can go to and talk to and ask for advice. Maybe, maybe it's with, with children. How do, how do they raise their children? Um, how it is in terms of taking care of the house or, or maybe running a business, things like that. How you deal and interact with people. Oftentimes, you learn some things that you carry over in life and it can be beneficial. So I just want to encourage one of the older people to be a source of inspiration and wisdom to the younger, but to, to those who are younger and who feel like maybe that you've got this thing figured out, you, one, you don't, but two, don't neglect using the resources, namely older people that God has given you. Amen.